This is an incredibly tragic event that obviously requires discussion and people need to talk about, about this. But can you give us some background to what's going on at Speaker's Corner? Because you, you're there most weekends, aren't you? Sadly, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the, it seems to me this is the place where free speech is meant to reign, where anyone, whatever they are, whoever they are, is able to get up and say whatever they want. Yep. And it should be unconstrained and the police should be there to protect them. And it's all... But something's gone wrong in recent years, hasn't it? It has. And as I always say, Speaker's Corner is the jewel in the crown of this country's free speech. Yeah. You know, free speech being the most important freedom that we enjoy in this country. Um, and as happened in New York, people have behaved the same in Speaker's Corner. We've had a stabbing in Speaker's Corner. We've had an individual who, there again, there was an attempt on her life. She was stabbed. She was stabbed in the forehead. She was stabbed in the neck. What, what had she said? She was a lady called Hatun Tash, who's a Turkish ex-Muslim who fled to this country. Um, she converted to Christianity, and she's a regular attender at Speaker's Corner. She preaches Christianity, and she critiques Islam. She critiques Islam in quite a direct way. Um, she wears a T-shirt with Charlie Hebdo cartoons on. Um, but that's that, the point of free speech. Of course it is. Of, of course it is, utterly. Yeah, an individual took it upon himself to try and kill her, to and kill her in Speaker's Corner. What, are the reper what are the repercussions have there been there? Have they caught the person involved? No. <laughs> the most bizarre aspect of the whole matter was the police were sitting in their police car a few yards away from where this event happened. Um, they, they drove in their, car, in their car after the guy as, as he ran off. But to this day, and I, and I only learned today from Hatoon, that they've now dropped the case. They've dropped the case because they've not been able to identify the attacker. Now, you know, how many... London is one of the most cctv Country, um, yeah. cities in, in, in the world, you're telling me they can identify him? So, you know, let's come back to... I mean, this is absolutely appalling, but to come back to what happened to Salman Rushdie, you know, this is a man who, one of our greatest novelists, wrote yep. a book. Yep. He wrote a book. Yep. And this is the, the consequence of that. So there are clearly some people, a very small minority of people, who just do not value free speech nope. and democracy and, nope. and our freedoms. And, you know, therefore, we have to probably take more of a stand, like what you're doing at Speaker's Corner. We have to mm -hmm. stand up, we have to mm -hmm. talk, talk mm -hmm. about these things. Yeah. Fre freedom of speech is not something that we've banked, that we can put in our back pocket and, and ignore and think we've achieved. Yeah. It is something that we continually have to defend. Yes. And, and clearly, in the, in the modern era, we have to defend it very strongly and very vehemently because there are swathes of our own society who don't value it, like, like the likes of you and I value it. And if we don't stand up for it, as, you know, as I said today when I spoke, it's not about the content of the book, it's not about the content of the T-shirt that Hattie and is wearing, it's their right to say what they want to say. But what, I mean, what strikes me is that most of the people who complain about the book haven't read the book. Precisely. There's, there's that as well. They've been Precisely. told that they should be upset about the book, but they don't know why. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I, un I understand that it was actually an Indian journalist. So after the book had been published, there was no, there was no outcry, there was no fuss. An Indian journalist who wasn't even Muslim um, wrote an article on the book, put the spotlight on the book, said it was highly offensive, and that's what instigated the whole international yeah. drama. And this happens again and again, doesn't it? If you remember uh, J.K. Rowling's novel, Troubled Blood, which was written as Robert Galbraith, mm -hmm. and a Telegraph reviewer said that the moral of this book appears to be never trust a man in a dress. Uh, but actually, the book isn't about that issue at all. No, There's uh, a moment where the killer wears a, a lady's coat as a, as a disguise or something. That's it. It's not about trans issues. It's the, it's the storm it, of offence that is generated by often some random person. Yeah. That, 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 massive that everyone piles into. And, you know, you mentioned J.K. Rowling. She is another author that immediately tweeted her support for, um, for Salman Rushdie. And within minutes, she's getting death threats. She's getting death threats on Twitter. So, so this is the problem, isn't it? Uh, you know... Is it that we didn't learn the lessons from the fatwa in 1989? That we didn't stand up and say, no, this is unacceptable. You people burning books, calling for someone's death, we stand against you. You know, mm -hmm, obviously mm -hmm. you can burn a book, that's your freedom, OK? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but was there sufficient condemnation from the people in power? I've, I've said we've neither learned the lesson, we've actually deteriorated in the position. Yeah. Salman Rushdie himself said in 2015, I think it was, we are in dark times. Mm. He wasn't describing the time after, after all this hoo-ha was instigated, when he was living in a safe house with special branch officers giving him 24-7 protection. He was saying that in 2015, which was a few months after the Charlie Hebdo yeah. matter. And he has said, and I think he was spot on, no one 
could write that novel now. No one would publish it. No one would sell it in their bookshops. Yeah. We have we have gone so far backwards from the moment but, that that book was published. But, but you know, he makes a good point. I mean, and and you can understand why people are nervous because, as you've said yourself, I mean, you know someone who was stabbed mm, mm. for saying what she wants to say. So the, the threat is real. And I blame that reality of that threat on the people in our mainstream media, in journalists, in our politicians, who have lived the statement, words are violence. Yeah. Words are not violence. Violence is violence. <laughs> I even remember during the Black Lives Matter protests, seeing placards and hearing people say, silence is violence. Again, no. Mm. Silence is not violence. Words are not violence. Violence is violence. And I think societally, we have gone down a very worrying road with this. So how do we resolve that? Because you're absolutely right. And that's actually a discourse that is becoming more and more prominent, even among uh, on university campuses, and the idea mm -hmm. that, that we, we had it. We were talking earlier about the cancellation of a comedian's show in Edinburgh, and the venue has said and justified its cancellation by saying that some people felt unsafe mm -hmm. because of the jokes. And apparently jokes are violent. Violence. That's the implication of that statement. I, I think we have given these fundamental, fanatical extremists permission to go out and stab people. Because we, as a society, have said words of violence. Yeah. If we're saying that, if we're saying that's part of our core belief, that gives people permission to go out and use violence for words, for t-shirts. Do, do you feel that the things that you're saying at Speaker's Corner, that they have any kind of effect do you think they persuade people? Do you think it has that value? I think if we all roll over and ignore this issue and pretend it's not happening, it will get worse and worse and worse. So I just strongly feel the urge to not ignore it, to actively yeah. go out and, and say what I've just been saying. Um, will it make a difference? I hope people start waking up. I hope people start voting for politicians that, that share these views, that share these concerns. Because if they don't, it will get worse. It will get worse. And part of the uh, way that we do that is to discourage this idea that discussions can be damaging. And, yeah. and, but that's yeah. such a deep-rooted problem now. You know, we were talking earlier about academics creating a blacklist of other academics who have bad opinions, the wrong, mm. the wrong thoughts, mm. right? Mm. And that is just so general now, so ubiquitous. I, yeah, I, I try not to be pessimistic. I try to believe that there is hope for us to turn this around. Yeah. But it's a, it's a cruise liner, isn't it? It's not going to be turned <laughs> around <laughs> very, very easily. No. But it, it isn't a worrying scenario. So that's why we all have to do the little bits that we can do. And what can people do to support Speaker's Corner? Are people Go! Just right. turn up. Just turn <laughs> up and go and, and, and suggest that your friends go as well because the one thing about Speaker's Corner it's become very very polarised on religion yeah. and, and some quite extremist representatives of religion so I just say go attend be a voice, be a pair of ears there and you don't mind hearing the extremist views? No, I, I, I will speak to anyone, whether publicly at Speaker's Corner or privately. In fact, I've, I've had a lot of grief from one side or the other because I've spoken to someone on the other side. Right, but that's but, hypocritical, isn't it? Well, of course it is. Yeah. You know, I, I've now got um, a pseudonym of Steve Not Hate because there are certain people out there that think I'm in bed with Hope Not Hate. Now, actually, Hope Not Hate are an anti-extremist organisation. I don't believe they're communists or far left, but I'm ga I've gained in recent times in recent weeks, this reputation of being in bed with them. I will always speak to every, anyone. Mm. I, don't, I don't care where you are, what your political view is, what your religious view. I'm of the sound belief that it is debate, it is conversation that, that, that helps. And what's the best time to visit Speaker's Corner? Um, it's every Sunday, um, only on Sundays. Um, and I would say between 2 o'clock... Two o'clock and seven o'clock. Six to seven is the danger hour. Yes. That's where the violence often breaks out, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, if you go there from one, two o'clock until five, then... Yes. And do you think, given the terrible situation with Salman Rushdie, do you think that people will now wake up? Do you think this will make a difference and that artists will collectively come together and say, no, the, the victim is not to blame. He is not to blame for writing yeah. a book. Well, I, I, I read this morning that at the Edinburgh Book Festival that they're encouraging all the writers to each... Um, talk through a sentence or two from the book. Yeah. That gives me hope yeah. that someone like the Edinburgh Book Festival will realise the importance of it. So, and, and to be honest, reading across the media, you know, the full breadth of media seem to be talking 
as one, that yes. this was a horrendous, horrific attack that we all must talk about, whether it's the Observer, the Guardian, the Mirror, everyone seems to be singing that same tune. So maybe there is hope.